This is bhakti. One other qualification should be there. Anukul yena Krishna anushilanam. Devotional service should be anukul. It means favorable to Krishna. Now, some persons can put forward the idea that the word anukul means for Krishna's happiness. But our acharyas, they have refuted this point. The word anukul, meaning favorable, does not mean necessarily for Krishna's happiness, immediate happiness. Why? Because we see that if Krishna is naughty, then what will Mother Yashoda do? She will take him by the ear and twist his ear and give him a slap. And he will begin to weep. If, he, if she has dressed him very nicely, and then he goes and becomes covered in mud and cow dung and dust. And then he comes to his mother, Oh, mother, mother, I want to come in your lap. She will say, No, I will not give you my breast milk. And Krishna will weep. So here it seems that Mother Yashoda is making Krishna unhappy, making him cry. Krishna wants to drink her breast milk, but what will she do? She will put him down and go and save the milk which is boiling over on the stove. Why? This makes Krishna unhappy. No. Here, bhakti means not for the immediate happiness of Krishna, but for his benefit. Madhya Shoda thinks, if I will give some chastisement to Krishna when he's naughty, then I give him some discipline. Then when he grows up, he'll be a very good character. But if I don't chastise him and give him discipline, when he grows up, he may become a dacoit or a thief or any bad character. He may become a rascal, a scoundrel, and he'll be very upset. So I have to control him and discipline him. Oh, I have to save the milk from boiling over. Why? Because Krishna likes to drink my breast milk, but he also likes kia, sweet rice. He likes to take a rubbery and, uh, and he likes uh, paneer. He likes yogurt and butter. I cannot make yogurt, butter and cheese from my breast milk. So, I'll have to put him down and save the milk from boiling over so that I can make all of these things for the benefit of Krishna. So, we see on the other hand, Srila Vishnu Tagritakwa gives an example that when Krishna was in the wrestling arena of Kansa, in that Ranshala, he began to fight. Krishna and Balaram Prabhu fought with Chanura and Mustika. At that time, those powerful wrestlers, they were trying to kill Krishna and Balaram and they would beat them with their fists and try to crush them. So when Krishna was beaten by the fists of the wrestlers, at that time he was very happy because he was in a mood for a good fight. So this gave happiness to Krishna. But is it bhakti? It can never be bhakti. Because their intention is not to benefit Krishna, but rather to kill Krishna. So the conclusion is that anukul, favorable, the word anukul means pratikul bhav rohita. That this service, which is under guidance, Towards Krishna should be pratikul bhav rahita. It should be rahit, that means completely devoid of pratikul bhav, any mood of animosity or enmity or any mood against or opposed to Krishna. This is the meaning of the word anukul. So, anukul yena Krishna anushilam bhakti kutama. Anything which is not life. कोई चीज है प्रतिकूल तो नहीं है अनुकूल भी नहीं है तो what should you so if there's something which is an inanimate object has no life like a tree or a rock or a stone this has no mood against Krishna so will it be bhakti no therefore Rupa Goswami Pad he had to use both words anukul yena and Krishna anushilanam the, the Anukul Yena indicates there should not be any mood against Krishna. And at the same time, there should be Krishna Anushilanam. Chesta. Uh, mm, there should be chesta. Positive endeavor. The uh, Shilanam means an endeavor. Should also make an endeavor. So someone who is neutral, mm, on the fence, not doing anything negative, but also not doing anything positive. Their, their existence, their idea, it cannot be bhakti. Therefore, Rupa Goswami very carefully included the word Anukul Yena and Anushilanam so that we have a perfect idea of bhakti. If this is called the Swarup Lakshan of bhakti or the intrinsic form of bhakti, the intrinsic uh, nature of bhakti has been defined by the line Anukul Yena Krishna Anushilanam. But unless the Tatasta Lakshan or the marginal characteristic the extrinsic characteristic of bhakti is also present. It may be called bhakti, but it will not be called uttama bhakti. That, that bhakti, which is uttam, ut means above and tama means darkness. 
It will be Uttama Bhakti. The devotional service, which is above the darkness of this material world. In other words, transcendental bhakti, if the mar marginal or extrinsic characteristic, the tatastalakshan, is present. So what is that tatastalakshan? We may try very hard to follow the swaruplakshan or the, the intrinsic form of bhakti, but unless the extrinsic uh, characteristics of bhakti are also present, then it will never be transcendental. So we have to be very careful for that. The extrinsic or tatastalakshan of bhakti is given in the first line of the verse, that is, anya bilashita shunyam, this is the first one, and the second one, jnana kamadhyana vritam. So we'll look at them one by one. First of all, anya bilashita shunyam. The word shunya means completely devoid of, not even a trace, not even a smell. If you have a, a bottle with some petrol, some gasoline in it, uh, and you pour out all the gasoline, now it's empty. But what happens? There's a, some smell is left behind. So our heart should be free from anyabilas. Free from other desires. Should not have oh, any... No, no. Something wrong. Sit, I'll come, can you come to see you later? <laughs> so, it should be free from anyabilas, other desires. That means, in the heart, there should not be any desire. But even... If all desires come out, even the smells should not be left behind. Completely purified of other desire. Only the Vritti of Swarup Shakti, the essence of Samvet and Pladini Shakti, can take out everything that there's no smell of any other desire at all. So here, Anya Shunyam means completely devoid of any Anya, means other, Abilas means desire. So Anya Bilas Shunyam, but there's a little suffix here on the end of the word. Anyabila Shita. Why did Rupa Goswami part give this suffix on the end of the word? This Why he could not tell Anyabilash? So this is the very cryptic question. Why does the verse say this? Why not Anyabilas Shunyam? Why Anyabila Shita Shunyam? Why? Oh, this is a very a, a difficult point. But our acharyas, such as Srila Vishnu Chakri Thakur, have cleared it very carefully. Hmm? First of all, hmm? the, this we should understand that this hmm, pratyay, this suffix on the end of anyabilas, indicates that it means having the quality at the time of one's natural disposition. In other words, one should have the quality of being completely devoid of all other desires when one is situated in his natural disposition. So this is quite a complex point, but by an illustration we can understand it very easily. If a person, they never ordinarily ask Krishna for anything at all, but at a time of great danger, if a calamity will come, if a life-threatening situation will come, it may, like Draupadi. Hmm, such as Draupadi. When Draupadi was in the council of the Kauravas and Dushashan, he came and he wanted to rip off her sari and make her naked in front of everyone. At that time, Draupadi was very helpless. At that time when Dushashan was uh, tearing away her sari, she raised her hands in the air and called out, Hey Govinda, Hey Gopal, Rako Sharan, Akto Jivanahari, Oh Krishna, now my life will be finished. Please, I am taking shelter of you. Please save me. And what happened? Krishna appeared there in his Vastra avatar, in his sari incarnation. <laughs> <laughs> he became the sari of Draupadi, and he, Dushashi was pulling and pulling meters and meters and meters of cloth. His arms are as powerful as 60,000 elephants. But he was pulling and pulling until those powerful arms became tired, and the sari was piled up to the ceiling. But still, the sari was still coming, and it never came to an end. So Krishna appeared and as the Vastra avatar, Draupadi Sari incarnation, to save her. Now, someone may say that if bhakti is the cultivation of all endeavors meant which are for the benefit of Krishna, then Draupadi is not doing bhakti. Why? Because she called out to save her own shame, for her own, to protect her own shyness. So she has broken the... Uh, definition of bhakti. So can we say this? We cannot. Why? Because 
in ordinary circumstances in her life, she would never think of asking Krishna for anything. She only wants to serve Him. But when she was put into this very dangerous, life-threatening situation, at that time, to call out to Krishna, Oh Krishna, please save me. This is not a, a breach or an interruption in one's bhakti. Because it's not in one's nature. It is not one's nature. Srila Gurudev gives another example. Once upon a time, there were some boys playing in the forest. And they thought they would play a joke. So they began to scream, Help! Help! There's a tiger! There's a tiger coming! Hmm? So the men in the village took their weapons and ran out there. And when they came to fight with the tiger, all the boys were laughing. Hmm? And oh, they saw, it was a trick. Actually, there's no tiger there. Then, on another day, again, they thought they would play the same joke. Help me! Help me! A tiger is coming! And then they came running there, but there was no tiger. But then one day came, and a real tiger came. And then the boys called out, Help us! Help us! A tiger has come! But the men in the village, they thought, Oh, they're playing a trick on us again, and they didn't go. Mm -hmm. Why? Because those boys, they were not in danger. Yet they were in the habit of calling, Oh, please come and help me. It was their habit. So at one stage, then no one came to help them. So for that person, it was in their nature to ask for help even though there was no dangerous situation. So that person is not, they, are, they have Anya Bilashita. It is in their nature that in a natural condition they have other desires. So Rupa Goswami Pad said, Anya Bilashita Shunyam, that because devotees in this world, especially the sadhak, he has some connection with his body, at the time of danger he's bound to call out to the Lord. Yet the Lord will not consider this to be a break in his devotional service and therefore to accommodate that uh, instance, to accommodate that situation within the definition of bhakti, then Rupa Goswami Pad gave the suffix sita and wrote anya bila sita shunyam. Is it clear? Srila Gurudev said if there are any questions, if someone does not understand, they can raise their hand. So anya bila sita shunyam jnana kamat genavritam. This is the beauty of the definition of Srila Rupa Goswami that his definition does not have the fault of ativyakti or avyakti dosh. Ativyakti dosh means his definition is not too broad that it will include things which are actually not bhakti, such as the, the fighting of the, the beating of the wrestlers against Krishna, which gave Krishna happiness. And avyakti dosh means that his definition is not too narrow that it will exclude something which will be included in bhakti, such as Madhya Shodas putting Krishna down and making him cry, or Draupadi's calling out for help when she was being disrobed by Dushashan. So this is the beauty and perfection of Srila Rupa Goswami Pad's definition, that it has no ativyakti dosh, the defect of overextension of the definition, and avyakti dosh, the defect of underextension of the definition. Now, jnana kamat genavritam. Bhakti should not be covered by karma. What does karma mean? Karma means activities prescribed in the Vedas. So what is prescribed in the Vedas? You have to eat, you also have to breathe, you have to take a bath. There are so many bodily necessities that we'll have to do. In Vedic society, if your parents pass do the pinda, offering some oblations for your deceased forefathers, these are different types of karmas given in the Vedas. So should you give up all of these things? Hmm? Should it be karma gyanadi shunyam? No. Rupa Goswami Pad said, no, that you don't have to give up these things. It should be jnana kamadi anavritam. That your, the uh, duties of life should not cover your bhakti. So now the question comes, when do the duties that we have to perform in our life cover our bhakti? When? When we have faith in those duties, thinking that if I do them, my devotion to Krishna will increase. And if I neglect them, my devotion to Krishna will be uh, hampered. It will be, it will be detrimental for my devotion. So if someone thinks, my parents have passed away, I will have to do their shraddha ceremony. Hmm? And if I don't do it, then my bhakti will be upset. Hmm? Then that person now has some faith in karma, which is covering his devotional service. And if he thinks, if I don't do it, it will disturb my bhakti. If he thinks, if I do it, then my bhakti will increase. This faith in karma, or prescribed duties of this world, is a covering of bhakti. So what is the prescription? Oh, we'll have to take a bath, 
we'll have to eat, we'll have to breathe, we'll have to do some duties in society, hmm? sannyasis, brahmacharis, these are also duties that we'll perform. But we will not think that, hmm? oh, if I don't offer the then this will destroy my bhakti. In other words, Krishna explained in Gita, Kamani eva dikaraste na faleshu kadachana ma kama fala hetubo mas te sangos prakamani. Hey Arjun, you have a right to do your duty for the cause of the results of your activities. Don't think that you are the enjoyer of the fruit of your activities. Mm -hmm. So if a person, a devotee in this world, accepts some duties in life, but in a mood of detachment, being detached from them, it will not cover his bhakti. So karma. Now, jnan. Jnan means knowledge. There are three types of knowledge. Tvam Padarta Gyan, Tat Padarta Gyan, and Brahma Jiva Aikya Gyan. First, Tat Padarta Gyan. Knowledge of what is God. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is knowledge. Krishna is Sarva Shakti Man. He has all potencies. Internal potency, external potency, this world, and Tatastha Shakti, from which the living entities have manifested. He has the power to make the impossible possible and the possible impossible. From him, in a moment, he can create millions of universes and destroy them again. And in a moment, recreate them again. So quickly, you did not notice the difference even. Krishna is so powerful. This is knowledge of God. That is called Tat Padarta Gyan. Another type of knowledge, Tvam Padarta Gyan. Knowledge of ourselves. Who am I? Am I God? No, I am not God. Hmm? Am I the absolute truth? No. Who am I? Huh? Krishna said, Mamai Vangso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. Hmm? Every living entity is my separated part and parcel. The living entity is eternal. He has no beginning, middle and end. And by Swarup, by constitution, Jivera Swarup Hai Krishna Nitya Das. Every soul by constitution is a servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is called Tvam Padarta Gyan. Hmm? Now the third type of knowledge, Brahma Jiva Aikya Gyan. That means to cultivate the knowledge that Brahma, the Supreme Absolute Truth, Nirvishesh, Nirakar, Nirgun, Nishakti, having no power, having no shape, no form, no personality, that is the Supreme Truth, and the Jiva and that impersonal Brahma are the same. There's no difference between them at all. Everything is one. And whatever variety exists is complete illusion. Hmm? So this is another type of Gyan. It's called... Of these three types of knowledge, Tat Padarta Gyan, knowledge of God, and Tvam Padarta Gyan, knowledge of the soul, these two types of knowledge do not cover Bhakti. In the beginning, we'll have to have this type of knowledge. When Bhav is mature, at that time we can forget. But in the beginning, this knowledge is essential. Uh, sambandha Gyan, Sadharana Sambandha Gyan. A general or common knowledge of the relationship between the soul and God is important. And therefore, in the beginning, it will not cover Bhakti. But the impersonalistic knowledge that no, we are not individuals, and there's only oneness, just like light and nothing else exists, and we are that light, I am God, you are God, we are all God. Mm. In that light there is nothing, so ultimately God is nothing, and everything is nothing, like Shunyavad. Mm. And voidism. This knowledge is very dangerous and it will be an obstacle and it will cover bhakti. It will not allow bhakti to manifest itself. Therefore Rupa Goswami Pad said, Jnana kama jnavritam. Some karma we should accept without attachment so that it will not cover. Some gyan we cannot accept so that we can understand the direction, the aim of our life and how to attain it. Uh, we can accept. But those having faith in karma, and having impersonal knowledge, this is very dangerous to bhakti, so we should not follow that, because it will be the avrita, it will be a covering, that should be given up. Now, karma, jnana, adi, the word adi means etc. So by the word adi, Srila Rupa Goswami part has indicated the practice of mystic yoga. Those who follow the astanga yoga system, hmm, and the... Uh, they control their breathing and, and the aim and object of their practice is yoga city, mystic power. Anima, lagima, mahima, kama, vasayita, prakti city. 
They want to be able to fly in the sky. They want to be able to reach out and pick an apple from the other side of the world. They want to become lighter than air or smaller than an atom so they can enter into anything. These are mystic powers. The desire to attain, oh, the, all these mystic powers is very detrimental for bhakti. So, this should also be given up, this, these desires and this attempt to attain mystic power. Here, Adi is the mystic yoga system for yoga city, but also indicates shushka vairagya, dry renunciation. Those who will, oh, just leave everything and give up everything. Artificially, by force, they give up their eating and their sleeping. They become very austere. What will happen? Their heart will become very hard. And bhakti, which is very soft and sweet, will not be able to enter into that heart. When their hearts become hard, then they also become proud. Oh, no one can stay awake for as many days as me. Who can eat as little food as me? All are lazy, they have to take rest, but I never take rest. And when someone becomes very austere, by force, not by the influence of bhakti, but by force. You know that Raghunas Das Goswami also gave up eating and sleeping and all of these things. But why? Because he was weeping. Hey Radhe, hey Braja Devi, hey Chalalite, hey Nanda Sunokata. Oh Radhika, where are you? Oh Krishna, where are you? Uh, it was like lines in stone, but it was not artificial. Hmm? He left all the things of this world because he was absorbed in separation, love in separation from Radha and Krishna. So automatically he forgot everything. But those who artificially will try to renounce everything, their heart will become hard, they may become proud, and they may commit offenses, like Durvasa Rishi and others, Subari Rishi and others. And as a result of that offense, what happened? Oh, then they're coming to a very dangerous and diabolical situation in their life. Subari Rishi fell down, and Durvasa Rishi was chased all over the universe by the flaming Sudarshan Chakra. So Rupa Goswami Pai, he said, if we want our continuous unbroken uh, endeavors of body, mind and words which is performed under guidance of Sadhguru and Vaishnavas to be actually transcendental we should not have any other desire in a natural condition we should not have faith in karma, jnana, yoga and dry renunciation, astrology hmm? now the devotees are thinking what should I do? should I surrender to Guru and Krishna? should I leave all things and go to India and be under the guidance of Guru? let me look in my astrological chart <laughs> My astrological chart says that I will be a pure devotee after 15 years, so I'll take it easy now. And then after 15 years, then I'll become serious. <laughs> and those who have faith in astrology and these things, they, they don't understand. Uh, it is true that your life history is written on the palm of your hand. But those who will clap their hands in the kirtan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all their lives will be changed. And all their future can be finished. And Krishna will take away all their karmas. And by surrender at the lotus feet of Sri Guru, they can enter into pure bhakti at that moment when they surrender to his lotus feet. Thank you. When one question will come. In this definition, it has been told Krishna Nu Shilana. Krishna Nu Shilana for Krishna. Then why to serve Guru, Siksha Dikha, Vishambhenu Guru Seva, and other uh, parts of Bhakti? Why Sundar Gopal? Why we should serve Guru? Why Diksha and Siksha? We should know everything done for Krishna Valli. Then why all these? Oh, eh? Limsam We should know. We should know. But what is my question? Hush. The question is. In this definition of pure bhakti, Srila Rupa Goswami states, Krishna nu shilanam. One should engage, one should cultivate all endeavors for the benefit in the service of Sri Krishna. So the question may arise, why 
Should a person serve Guru? Why should a person serve the Vaishnavas? Does it not merely suffice to engage all of one's actions? What is the need of Diksha and Siksha? What is the need of Shiksha and Diksha? Why Guru Padasharaya taking shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Guru? It does it not. We should serve Krishna, not why we have to serve Guru? Does it not suffice simply to serve Sri Krishna? We should understand that there are two, Bhagavan has two manifestations Vishaya Bhagavan and Ashray Bhagavan. Vishaya Bhagavan is Sri Krishna, Ashray Bhagavan is Baladev Prabhu or Nityananda, in other words, Guru Tattva. In the verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam The same question arises. Are these nine limbs of bhakti to be directed simply in the service of Sri Krishna? No. The verse that follows Iti pung sarpita vishno bhaktish chennava lakshana kriyeta bhagavat yadha tanmanye dhitam uttamam The word here, the dual case has been used for this very specific reason. In other words, one will not simply worship Krishna, but one will also worship Guru or Ashray Bhagavan. It is stated, Pratamantu tu gurum pujya tatash chayva mamarchanam kurvan siddhi mavaknoti yanyata nishpalam bhavet Here Sri Krishna states, any person who endeavors to worship me alone without worshiping Sri Guru first, the endeavors of that person will be worthless. In other words, such a person will achieve nothing. Yet, someone who first, with all dedication, worships Sri Guru, and then Anu, under the guidance of Sri Guru, worships Sri Krishna, that person will attain all perfection. This particular point is stated in all Shastra. Yasya Deve Para Bhakti Yata Deve Tatagurao Tasyaite Katita Yata Prakashante Mahatmana If one wishes, to attain para bhakti, in other words, transcendental bhakti, in other words, uttama bhakti, which we've just been speaking about, what should such a person do? Such a person must give his heart unconditionally in the service of Sri Guru. Such a person must worship Guru with the same dedication, love, attention, and lack of interruption or break as one serves Sri Hari. Jasya Devi Parabhakti. Same. You remember? This is slow. Go on. So, it is stated throughout Shastra that without worshipping Sri Guru, Sri Guru first, one will attain nothing at all. This question has therefore, has thus been answered, and any person who neglects these instructions of Shastra does so to their detriment. Vancha kalpa tarubya stro kipa sin dubya eva cha patita anam kalpa yu. Bhakti should be for Krishna and also Krishna Shambandhi. Huh? Then Bhakti, Krishna Shambandhi, even is a straw which is favorable for Krishna and this is for Krishna, related to Krishna. If he will do bhakti to Mother Jasoda, where it will go? If you have same kind of bhakti to Mother Jasoda, Nanda Baba, gopis, then where it will go? Go to Krishna. So it should be related to Krishna and for Krishna both. Then it will be bhakti. Oh. Gaushunda. Can you sing 
Nifale, Hari Hari, Nifale, Jhanu, Gawain, like your melody of your sister. Try it. We buy zero coal. You can think any question if you like. Page, page 94 in your yellow book. Page 94 in your yellow book. After this. All are tired to hear. Very tired. Unless you prove that tired. Why is he here? Hare Hare Kifale Janama Gaino Hare Hare Kifale Oh, oh, oh. 